Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Delegate Bagnell's virtual town hall. It's fabulous to have you all with us. Uh, my name is Luke Tudball. Uh, I am working with the delegate. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Just a couple of uh, pieces of housekeeping. Uh, please do keep yourself muted unless you are actually speaking. Um, and that way we can reduce the amount of background noise. Uh, also, just to remind everybody that a meeting is being recorded. Uh, also, if you have a question, uh, you're more than welcome to ask them. What we do is ask you to send a message to, in the, uh, send a private message in the chat to the uh, account that's called DHB admin. So delegate head of back on admin and, um, or to myself. And uh, we will then uh, pass those questions on at the appropriate time. Other than that, uh, if you do have any other questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. And you can also find this at a later date on the Delegates YouTube channel. Otherwise, thank you so much. I will pass over to Delegate back now to welcome our guests. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today for the third of our 2022 Legislative Session Virtual Town Hall series. I'm Heather Bagnell, your Delegate in District 33. I first wanna thank you once again for your continued commitment to our community as we experience another surge we are not quite out of the woods with COVID and the transition from pandemic to endemic continues to bring with it new challenges, but we have had some good news today on the vaccination front for those who are not yet eligible for vaccination. Um, though we are seeing a relaxation of restrictions, COVID is very real and still present and it requires everyone to ensure that we can keep our community safe, our businesses open, our children in our school buildings and our live arts alive. Before we begin talking about the new districts and how we can confirm our, your candidates, I wanted to once again reiterate my commitment to reducing gun violence. As those of you who have joined us previously are aware, I was shaken by the events of Buffalo, New York, and Valde, Texas, and most recently, Smithsburg here in Maryland. Um, tonight, we are going to attempt to demystify our new districts. Um, one of the concerns I've heard repeatedly from constituents is confusion about the county districts versus the legislative districts versus the congressional maps, um, how to determine where, uh, you know, where folks are, um, who would be representing them, who their candidates are, how they can identify their election polling sites, and even, even their voting options have changed and where to go for that information. I am honored tonight to be joined by representatives from our county, as well as our federal delegation and our state board of elections. Um, before I, I introduce our first speaker, uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, please be sure to subscribe to my social media. I primarily use Facebook and Twitter for immediate information, but um, and, and so as not to clog up your inboxes, but I do send updates on events and issues within the community. I wanna thank you all uh, for being here and for your help and your advocacy throughout our session. I especially wanna thank our congressional partners, uh, one of whom is here tonight, uh, Congressman Sarbanes, who have been working side by side with us throughout the pandemic, throughout the session, and, uh, and, and as, we, as we have navigated the, the, the continual challenges we've experienced. I'm going to work to keep this call to an hour to respect your time. And because I know we are all a little zoomed out these days. So um, we'll attempt to answer any questions, but if, if you can't get your question answered on the call, we will circle back with you and make sure that you have the answers that you need. If you have a question and have not yet submitted it in advance, please feel free to put your question in the chat. Um, I also wanted to thank Carolyn Hecker, my chief of staff, and Luke Tudball, who consistently work behind the scenes to make me look much more tech savvy than I already am. Um, and they always make me, uh, appear on top of every issue. So we do have three speakers tonight because uh, you know redistricting is um, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a mystery to, to us all and, and I'm certainly not an expert, um, but we do have expertise from, uh, from our congressional level, uh, from Congressman Sarbanes, who is our representative from District 3. Um, Lisa Rodvian here is here from the County Council. She's our County Councilwoman from District 6 here in Anne Arundel County, and also the chair of the Anne Arundel County uh, Council delegation. Um, and we also have Nikki Charlson, who's here, who's going to be here from uh, the State Board of Elections uh, to help us understand um, how we're disseminating the new information, um, what what our options are and where to go if we have questions. Um, I'm going to turn it over in just one moment uh, to Congressman Sarbanes, 
But I just wanted to thank you once again for, for being on this call. I do also want to recognize um, we have a couple people on this call. Uh, John Wakefield, who is here, um, he's a candidate for uh, District 33B. Um, I believe we have uh, Sean Livingston, who's also a, a candidate for, uh, for County Council District 7. Um, so I want to thank you uh, for being here as well. Uh, Congressman John Sarbanes, there's so much I can say about the Congressman um, and the, the work that he's been doing. He's been with the US Congress since 2007. Um, he uh, has, has been the chair of the Democracy Reform Task Force, which I, I thought was very appropriate as, as we are uh, heading into the primaries and also as, as we're trying to understand um, you know, how, to, how to best uh, utilize our, our, uh, our vote and our democratic process in these, in these new district lines. Um, he was the, the, the architect of the For the People Act to reform and strengthen our democracy. It's also um, has worked to protect our environment, has, has led the charge on more affordable, high quality health care, um, and, and uh, his uh, constituent services and responsiveness is, is um, you know, with, without match. So Congressman Sarbanes, thank you so much for being here and for, for giving, you, giving us your time and your expertise tonight. Well, thank, thank you very much, Heather. It's, uh, it's an honor to join you and your guests tonight. And I know we're gonna hear as well from uh, Council Member Rodvian. And you pointed out we have some candidates that are, that are running as well. And you brought some experts to the table for this discussion on redistricting. So thank you for that. It's all part of uh, serving your constituents. And <clears throat> this topic of redistricting is a very important one because it can be confusing to people. There's no question about that. I actually spent the last five years or so traveling the country talking about the challenging uh, issue of redistricting and how we can create more uniform standards that apply uh, everywhere, at least as, as it impacts Congress when it comes to drawing the lines. We'll continue to to try to achieve the standard that we think is respectful of you know, the, the public and, and voters. That's very, very important. We've now been through the process in Maryland for drawing new lines at the congressional level, uh, as well, obviously, at the state level, uh, the General Assembly districts and the Council Manic districts. So there's a lot of new information. And any voter who's listening to this who feels confused uh, can take some comfort in knowing that that even the elected officials get confused by this um, at times because uh, it, it represents quite a bit of change. For example, the current 33rd legislative district that you represent with, with two other uh, delegates and a state senator intersects a little bit with the current third district over on the on the Broadneck Peninsula. But with the new maps, the new district that you will be representing if you're elected is 33C, which actually overlaps pretty much 100% with the new third district. So um, if we're both elected, then we would be serving the same constituents. There would be a lot of overlap there. So I appreciate that this can be um, difficult for people to get their, their heads around. The most important thing, as you pointed out though, is for voters to uh, try to be as educated about this as they can. And there's many ways they can do that. You've got someone from the State Board of Elections who's going to share uh, information and that's a terrific source. You are a source, any elected official, uh, obviously in this case in Anne Arundel County, but across the state of Maryland, uh, should be a good source of information to the voters that are being asked to go into the to the voting booth this November and make a decision about who should represent them. So we have an obligation as elected officials to make sure we're providing good, strong, uh, understandable information about what the new district looks like. And of course, this is exactly what you're you're seeking to achieve with this with this presentation uh, this evening. I can tell you that when it comes to the third district, um, the shape of it has changed uh, fairly substantially from uh, where it used to be. And a lot of it includes the North County of uh, North Anne Arundel County and then uh, pretty much all of, of Howard County. Uh, so that's quite a change from the way it was before. 
it means I'm going to be meeting a lot of new voters in this upcoming campaign, just as other elected officials will have to reach out and meet some new people. But it's all part of the process. It's one that I certainly enjoy. And it, it all ties back, as I said at the outset, to making sure you respect the voters. Um, they're the ones that send you wherever you may go, whether that's Washington um, or to Annapolis, either serving on the council in this case or serving in the general assembly. So the voters are our bosses and we've got to be as clear as we can in explaining what these districts look like. The last thing I'll say, and I'm sure you'll get to this in the discussion is people get a little confused about the timing of things. The fact of the matter is until we get to next January, the residents that we've been representing up to this point, we will be continuing to represent. When we get to January after an election, that will change. Um, but in order for it to change, it means that when voters go into the, the voting booth or vote early or vote by mail, they will see on the ballot the names of the new people that next year would be representing them. So we're kind of in this transition stage where, yes, you have a current representative according to the current lines that exist, but you're going to vote on the new representative that you will have in the new district lines that are being drawn. Again, whether that's congressional uh, or general assembly maps or council manic maps. So it can be confusing. It's confused me on occasion. So um, I thank you, Heather, for pulling this together and bringing in experts who can uh, really shed light on this process and answer any questions that you have. I'm sorry I won't be able to stay for the duration, but I did want to come and, and thank you for providing this very important public service. I greatly appreciate it, and I, I know your 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 time is tight. And I and I also appreciate um, you talking about the fact that that it's confusing to to you as well, um, because we we did we had a lot of people that said um, that that even told me that, you know when we were going through this process, well you know the maps go into effect immediately, and I said. Then, then a third of my district won't have representation till January. That can, that can't possibly be logically accurate. Um, and so, so I went and did did my own digging as well to to make sure that that I was I was disseminating accurate information because I think it's 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 really tough. Um, and I and I appreciate you being here and and making this um, you know more accessible for our constituency because I, I will say I think District Thirty Three is is the smartest constituency in the state of Maryland. Um, I'm not biased in any way. But, um, but, but it's funny you say that because I think that, that the voters in the third district are the smartest in Maryland too. So. <laughs> there you, and, and, and look at the confluence, look at the confluence coming together. Um, well, Congressman Sarbanes, I'm, I'm not gonna hold you up because I know, I know you have another meeting to get to, but thank you so much for being here, for talking to us about this. Um, we look forward to, um, to, to, to more uh, opportunities of, of, of synergy and, and really, um, Exploring that the new the new maps of, of uh, congressional district three and that 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 overlap between um, district thirty three and and what will will be the new uh, district thirty three C. Um, Thanks so, very much, Heather. I look forward to seeing you out on the trail and Lisa and everybody else who's who's going to be out there pushing pushing on those doors and meeting those voters. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much uh, for being here and um and 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 thank you for all the work that you're doing in in Congress. I I know it's um. It, it can feel like an uphill battle, but but we're we're very much uh, appreciative of of the work that you're doing to support our district and also to respond to our constituents. Absolutely. Have a great night. Take care. Bye bye. You too. Well, um, we're going to turn now uh, from the federal to the local. Um, of course, I am the bridge between the two. At the state level, um, I know a lot of you followed. The, um, the redistricting process um, as, as I did, um, you know, it was, it was interesting being in office for the first time um, going through this process, even as we were also navigating a pandemic, navigating an economic crisis. Like, you know, I feel like, I feel like this, this particular freshman class is, is, is the pivot party um, because we've just learned how to adapt and adapt and adapt again. Um, but, uh, but, Councilwoman Ravian um, 
you have had a, a, a very different process. You, whereas we are, we are a little more at the state level, we're a little sort of on the sidelines watching it happen. Um, the, as I understand it, the council has a little more of a seat at the table. Um, and, and the difference too, is that we still ended up with the same number of, um, of districts uh, in, in the council. So, um, so if you want to talk to us a little bit about that process and about um, uh, how, how those maps are changing and, and how folks can get, get, get a hold of you and what, what your efforts are to, 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 to get the information out. So I just first say thank you so much to Delegate Bagnell for ho holding this town hall. This is a really great event on a topic that um, I think you've mentioned before. People are always a little bit uh, shy to ask about because they, you know, people think, oh, well, why shouldn't I already know this? Well, the truth is a lot of us don't know it. Um, and it is extremely confusing, um, especially with borders of or boundaries and districts changing and, um, you know, I represent the city of Annapolis, which has a whole additional set of boundaries because of our city wards. So you've got um, an extra layer of representation, um, which means an extra district number to represent or to remember. So I thought I would bring um, a couple a, a couple tools to help folks um, identify what district they are in currently for the county council. So the, um, currently under our county charter, we have seven districts. And um, so that number for us is fixed, assuming the charter doesn't change. And um, there can be amendments, uh, proposed amendments brought to um, the voters to uh, change that number. But currently it's seven and there is no current discussion about changing that number in the county, even though we are quite, uh, we're growing quite rapidly. So I thought I would provide you first with this little tool, if I can drop this in the chat, um, that is from directly from the county website. And oh, can I, oh, shucks, I am disabled. Is that, is there a way to, for me to? Yep, we're, we're, we're working on it right oh, now you, in the back office. Someone is super fast. <laughs> I have been enabled. So this is a link from um, the county, uh, from the Anne Arundel County website. And basically you can start out here. If you wanna know what um, your councilmanic district is, you basically just type in your address and it will pop up what district you're in. And unlike the state and federal districts, we actually, um, once our new districts are voted in, they take effect immediately. And so, um, and I think that's probably different because I know at the state level or at the state level, the, the exact number of districts can change because you can have, um, you know, 33, all one district for the delegates, and then you can have an A, B, and C. Um, and so I'm sure Heather will be talking about that when, she, when we get to the state part of this presentation. But the council um, is, we have already moved to our new districts. So, um, and I, I double checked to make sure that this tool, on, this online tool reflects that because the district boundaries have changed a little bit um, for Anne Arundel County. Um, the, our process is somewhat similar. It's a, it's a little bit smaller scale as you might expect since we're, we're one, one county, although we're a county of almost 600,000 people now, now, so we're getting big. But- um, Fourth in the state now. <laughs> yes, largest yes. in the state. Yeah, so- um, each member of the county council appoints a member to the Charter Review Commission. And the Charter Review Commission is a commission that meets every 10 years. And the very first thing that they do is they review the councilmanic districts and determine um, if they are um, roughly equal in size in terms of population. And if they are not, they make adjustments. So um, we determined, or we, I should say, the, the Charter Review Commission determined that there had been a little bit of shifting. And so um, in particularly District 4, which is the western part of the county, Odenton, Fort Meade area, Laurel, um, has grown in population. So that means they've grown in population, they shrink in geographic size, and some of their population moves will be adjusted to move to a different district. So, um, if I'm if I'm going too fast and you have questions, because already I'm I'm can see how this could be easily confusing. Um, district six, proportionally to the other, uh, which is the district I represent, that rep is the city of Annapolis, Crownsville, um, and. Uh, now up through Heritage Harbor, Indian Landing, parts of Millersville, um, our district proportionally to the other six districts 
is actually smaller. So we we gained a little bit of geographic area. So our we'd be more evenly balanced with the other six districts. Um, the if you want to actually look at the maps, uh, actually maybe could I just uh, put show the maps on the screen? I love looking at maps. I I don't know about you guys, but I always feel like it's sort of like the picture tells a a, a, a thousand words. You should be able to um, share your screen now. Thank you so much. Let me pop this up here, and I will also share a link as well. So let's see. Of course, I've got eight thousand tabs open. I bet many of you do too, because that's how life seems to go these days. Um, let's see. Are you guys able to see? Are you able to see something? Let me try again. It seems like that maybe didn't work. Hmm. Hang on a second. My apologies. That's right. We're going to make you a co-host to make it a little easier to share your screen. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I should have, I should have uh, checked in advance to make sure this was all um, good to go. Okay. So this is actually a map that shows the new districts. And um, let me try again to share. So I had to reopen a um, reopen one of my tabs or one of my um, browser windows. And um, I'll drop this link also in the chat, but um, because you can actually get in quite a, a detail here. Um, you can actually not, the streets are not all labeled, but you can look really all the way down to the street level in this map, which um, if you're a map person, this is a really nice way to look at everything that's going on here. Um, let me see, where's, I'm sorry, I'm a little, there's the chat. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to drop this link so you can, you know, play around and check out this map if this is your kind of thing and really see how the new boundaries of the districts um, are laid. So this is the this is the link directly to the same map that I've got on the screen. And let me just show you how what it looks like when you zoom all the way in. And you can really get, and I'll show you the new part of um, District 6. So let's see. So there are a, a number of new precincts um, that had been part of District 4 which you know is mainly the western part of the county, which now are part of District Six, and they're up here in the northern part of District Six. So um, that's really the the change that's happened for District Six. The rest of District Six is exactly the same as it has been before. The city of Annapolis, basically everything between the Severn River and the South River is District Six. Um, but if you're curious about, you know, I assume there are folks here that live in in different parts of the county. You can really just you know kind of surf around on this map and and check out exactly. There's District Five had a little bit of change, um, and I imagine you know I know um, Delegate Bagnell um, has a lot of overlap with County District Five, so I imagine there might be some District Five folks here. Um, but the changes are relatively modest. Um, thankfully, the way our Charter Review Commission operates and the fact that we have a relatively even split county council, we have, um, you know, in a in a partisan discussion, we have four Democrats and three Republicans. Um, the changes are relatively modest. And in order to make any changes, you have to have a vote of five members. So we basically had to find something that was going to be agreeable to um, to pretty much everyone. And I, I believe our map got a 7-0 vote. I, I don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and double check. But it wasn't terribly controversial because we really just moved things to adjust to the population. So there, you know, our our county has got some odd shape to it. It's not, um, you know, it's not this nice square grid like thing. We've got peninsulas and rivers and creeks and everything. So our districts reflect that a little bit. Um, but the districts are reasonably compact. Um, which is one of the things that, you know, when when judges are looking at districts because someone challenged and say, hey, this district is really not um, drawn in a fair manner. One of the things they look for is its compactness. And um, you can see there's a little bit of, you know, you can see they had to, you can see pieces of what was district four got, got uh, shifted over to district five and district six. So I think district five is probably one of the more oddly shaped districts at this point, but that's kind of a result of, you know, um, 
that's where some of the biggest changes happened. Um, district pieces of district four and a little of district two moving to district five. So um, hopefully that tool is helpful. And I'm trying to think if you're really, really interested um, in what the process was to get us here, if you really, really like to get in the weeds, I've got one last link for you. And this um, shows all the different options that the Charter Review Commission um, was examining when they when they brought these maps to the table. But so there's the three in levels of complexity. If you just want to type in your address and know your district, use the first link. If you like to a little bit more information, you want to know who else is in your district and the geography of your district, the second link. If you want to know the whole history of how these districts got drawn, that third link is for you. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about it, but um, I know it's the the council districts were not nearly as contentious as you know many states around the country, and also uh, you know the state level districts and the congressional districts. So I hope that is helpful. And like I said, is there um, Delegate Bagnell? Is there anything else you'd like me to mention or discuss or anything? I think you that's amazing. Us. And I will tell you, I, I, I did a terrible job of, of, of introducing your bio, but I said, this is what happens when you get two educators together, two arts educators together <laughs> who are just really excited about, about, you know, educating the populace. And, and I really appreciate that you said you've got the multi-levels, you know, if you just <laughs> want to know in broad strokes, here's where you go. If you want to know in a little <laughs> more detail, and if you're like, really want to nerd out on this whole process, um, you know, we, 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 have those tools to do that as well. Um, I will say as a, as a proud representative and resident of the Broadneck Peninsula, I do understand the geographic challenges of trying to draw maps that, 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 that look pretty because, um, because they're, they're not necessarily reflective of, of the, the actual geography of our county. Um, but yes. thank you so much, um, Chair Rodvian, because I think this was really informative. Um, for those of you who, um, are sort of following along, trying to, 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 to piece together how these all work. Um, the uh, District 33, as, as it exists now, you know, before the redistricting, is a multi-member district. Um, it, encompass, it encompasses three congressional districts um, and five of the seven council manic districts. So that's why it's so complicated with the overlap. Um, at the state level, we, um, going forward, District 33 is going to be um, a, a three single member district, which means it'll be one senator, um, but but one delegate per sub district, uh, whereas before it was one senator and three uh, delegates for the whole that, that were representing the whole of, of, of the district. So um, and and Chair Rodbian, you have given me an incredible segue to um, to our next uh, speaker, who's who's going, I know is going to help us sort of tie this all together and understand um, the big picture, and that's um, Nikki Charlson, who's here from the State Board of Elections. Um, I, I am so grateful that you're here, and I, I and I'm so grateful for having sort of a front seat uh, to to the work that you do, you know, for those who, who don't know. In 2018, um, my race was actually decided 10 days after the election uh, because they still had to they still had to count um, the the uh, the absentee ballots, the vote by mail ballots, the provisional ballots uh, and the, the military. And and so I was able to see what that process looks like. And and um, if you've ever had any discomfort with our electoral process, I strongly encourage you to go to those canvases and see the incredible bipartisan work that our, our local boards of elections do because they really, um, they really take it as, as a point of pride uh, that this is, this is a, a nonpartisan um, uh, process and very transparent process even during the pandemic um, as, as they were uh, preparing for the 2020 elections. I don't think I'm overstating um, that, that they were having these meetings that were, they were live streamed. You could see the meetings. You could, you could ask for the, the, the meeting minutes. You could talk to the election judges if you had questions. Um, and so I, I greatly appreciate that, that you're here tonight to talk to our constituency because there's still a lot of confusion about where we go, what we do, um, and I know the board, the, the the board of elections is doing a lot of work um, to educate the you know the populace and, and provide these make these tools available for us. So thank you so much for being here. 
Well, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I am very happy to join you and your constituents today. I am a resident of District 33, uh, so happy to always educate um, my fellow constituents. Uh, so yeah, there's the redistricting process. You've had some great speakers talk about what it means from the legislative, well, from the legislative experience, right? Congressional and county. Um, but the election officials are the ones that are implementing it. And so um, it's the implementation of the new lines is mostly done by local election officials. I work for the state board of elections. And so we have been supporting our local boards as they have been implementing the lines that have been passed by the county council and by the state legislature. Um, but now it's time to, to get voters to go, you know, get them where they need to go so they can vote. Um, so the results of the redistricting process means that for some voters, not all, but some voters, and you've talked a little bit about the groups that are moving, but some voters are gonna be in different districts, whether it's a county district, whether it's a legislative district or a congressional district, and which means some voters are gonna have different candidates and some dis voters might be in a different polling place. And so uh, we'll just walk through how voters can find out where their districts are. Um, the, the chair gave a great map, um, Love Maps. Um, we have a different website where you can use, where you just type in your name and your address and you can find out all sorts of information. Are you registered? Because of course that's really the first thing you have to do, right? We have to get you registered so you can vote whether you're voting in the new district or not. Uh, I will drop that in the chat. Um, I have it up here, so I will just drop that in the chat so you can see that. So this is what we call our voter lookup. I don't know if it went through or not. I don't see it, but um, my screen's a little small. Um, it, it's yeah, we, we we have it. You got it. Okay. I just could, I Great. just confirmed to make sure that, that okay. it was available. And okay. we'll and um and we'll send all of these um we'll send all of these uh um. <laughs> sorry. My cat's trying to make a cameo. We'll send all of these out in uh, in a follow up email so that so that we'll make these um these tools and these resources available Great. to everyone. Um, so we have a, a system on our website that we call the voter lookup, where you can check to make sure you're registered to vote. Uh, you can find out where you vote, which would be something we want you to confirm before you go to vote if you want to vote in person. Uh, the early voting centers have changed for this election. Um, in part because the election moved from June to July. And so some of the locations were not available in July. Um, so if you plan to vote during early voting, check out that website and make sure that you know where your the early voting centers are in the county. Um, and if you wanna vote on election day, check and make sure that you know where your polling place is because that may have changed for you um, either because of redistricting or because the polling place that normally is your polling place maybe wasn't available with the new date. Uh, so it is really important to check, one, confirm you're registered, uh, two, make sure that your information is up to date. Have you moved? Maybe you haven't told us. Um, maybe you wanna change your party. There's a primary coming up. Maybe you are unaffiliated and you wanna participate and vote for a governor. You wanna make sure that you're affiliated with one of those political parties. Uh, check your, find out your early voting centers if that's how you wanna vote find out your election day polling place and where that is if you wanna vote. And of course, we also have information on there if you've requested a mail-in ballot. Uh, those went in the mail just a few days ago, so they should be hitting mailboxes in the next couple of days. And so you can track your ballot there as well. Um, so really encourage voters to use the voter lookup website on our, on our site. And the other thing is if you, um, you can just wait for the mail. I know I got a new voter registration card in the mail. Um, and so that would tell you your new information. Uh, so it will tell you what your new districts are and it will tell you or what your new districts will be. And I'll get into what, what Congressman Sar made the distinction he was making because that's important. But what your new districts will be and also where your polling place is. So if you receive that card in the mail, um, it does have important information. So try to look at it before you file it away. Um, but if you file it away or you lose it, you can always use the voter lookup site that I dropped. Um, the same information is in there. If you plan to uh, vote in person, then you'll get in the mail a few days, probably before early voting starts, you will get a sample ballot in the mail. 
And that will tell you also where your new polling place is, if it's, or where your polling place is, whether it's new or not. It will also tell you the early voting centers, and it will also include your ballot. So that's where you'll see if any of your districts have changed. If you plan to vote by mail, then your ballot that you get in the mail is your notice, right? You don't necessarily, you're not going to need to vote in person because you're getting your ballot in the mail, and that ballot is going to include your districts. Um, Congressman Sarbanes made a good distinction about um, who are your candidates today and who you, will be your candidates in January. And so our voter lookup website and the ballots you will be voting this year are going to be your, your candidates and your districts starting in January. So the state offices and the congressional offices are all sworn in in January. And so those will be your officials and your districts in January once they're sworn in. But we know that sometimes voters need to know who their elected officials are now. Uh, maybe you wanna write your delegate or your senator and you need to know who that is. So I'm gonna drop in the chat a website that you might find to be handy. Um, it's, it's run by the Department of Planning and the State Department of IT and you type in an address and it will tell you what districts you are in now. Uh, so again, our website is your new districts and your polling place that you wanna vote in coming up. But the other website, the who are your elected officials, that's going to tell you who your current officials are until the new ones are sworn in in January. Uh, so I just, while I have the mic, if that's okay, just wanna highlight a few other important deadlines about the election coming up. Absolutely. Uh, okay, take personal privilege, I have the mic. Uh, so the election is January 19th, uh, that is changed. Um, in light of redistricting, we needed a little more time to implement all the changes and let the litigation uh, finish up before we could start finalizing the changes. So the election is July 19th, and that means that the deadline to register to vote or update your information is June 28th. Um, so we do have on our website a way you can do that all online, and I'll drop that in the chat as well in a minute. I encourage you to use our voter lookup to make sure you're registered, make sure everything is current. But if you're not registered or something is outdated, to please uh, make sure you update that by June 28th. We do have same day registration um, and same day address change during early voting. And so that is an option if you miss the 28th, the June 28th deadline. But we really encourage voters to do it in advance. It will make your voting process much simpler and much quicker. But if you forget, we can still take care of you when you show up to vote, but just know it'll just take you a little bit longer to finish that process. If you wanna vote by mail, uh, we have sent out um, applications to, to many, many voters. Um, the first batch went out earlier this year to register Democrats and Republicans because we know every Democrat and Republican has a ballot. Another set of about half a million went in the mail last week to unaffiliated and third party voters who have a ballot for this election and then any other newly registered re Democrats or Republicans. So if you wanna vote by mail, that deadline is July 12th, but really encourage you to do that as soon as you can. So we just let, make sure we get the, the ballot to you with plenty of time, but the deadline to request that ballot is July 12th. Early voting is from July 17th. To, I'm sorry, it's not July 17th, it's July 7th to the 14th and election day is July 9th. Um, so just a lot of that information is going to be in your sample ballot. It's certainly available on our website, as well as the Anne Arundel County Board of Elections website, and just encourage you to use those two sites as your trusted information sources. We know there's lots of information out there about the election. Um, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard fight to fight to, to share good information and accurate, but rely on either the state board of elections or your local boards of, your Anne Arundel board of election uh, for the accurate information. Um, I will make a final pitch for serving as an election judge. If you wanna participate in the process, it's a super great way to serve your community. Um, it's the most important public service I think you can do. And um, you can just call the Anne Arundel County Board of Elections. You get paid too. It's a long day, but it's a fun way to serve your community and, and help. Uh, we are short election judges. It's one of the most difficult things the local boards have to do. And so if you're interested in serving uh, for one day during early voting or multiple days or election day, please, please sign up. And, and um, segueing on that, uh, the, can, can they sign up to be election judges 
not just for the primaries, but also for the general elections in November? Yes, we will take whatever people want to work. We are not picky. Well, thank you so much. And I have, and I have a few questions because because um because I have some 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 questions that have come from constituents um, because we have a, um, Chair Rodvian said she served as an election judge. Um, it was interesting. It was great uh, great pay. And and as I said, it's an incredible process. Um, it's an incredible process to watch. At the, at the polls and also at the at the, the canvases. Um, so we are seeing uh, ballot drop boxes appearing. Ballot drop boxes are a fairly new uh, thing for for um, for our, our, our county and our state. Um, they were incredibly important during the pandemic, um, but they're but they're already we're we're seeing them coming out. They've got a lock on the on the box. They've got a camera, a twenty four hour camera, um, security camera on there. Um, and, and as people are receiving their uh, vote by mail ballots, um, is there a time restriction on when they can start dropping ballots at those uh, ballot drop boxes? And um, is there is the pickup time restricted to early voting or uh, is that already a process that's happening now? So once the ballot boxes are in place, they're open. And um, it, it, because it's a new process, we learned a lot about the ballot boxes in 2020. But you're right, delegate, voters love them. Of course, there was lots of controversy about the Postal Service. Uh, we are tracking their delivery and they are moving ballots very quickly now, um, but we're constantly monitoring that. But the ballot boxes are super convenient. Um, postage is paid, so you don't have to pay for it even if you put it in the mail, but people like the the, the action of putting it in the box. Uh, so those are in place and they're open now. They are locked, but actually, so they're locked and they're very secure. Um, there is a padlock on it, but it's actually keeping the slot open. So just because you see a padlock there does not mean that, that it's not available for use. It's actually keeping the slot open. Uh, so anybody can come through and drop their ballots off. So if you see it, it's there. So as soon as you get your ballot, feel free to vote it and take it back to a box. Um, inside with your ballot packet will be a list of all of the ballot boxes in Anne Arundel County. So you can just find the one that's most convenient to you. Um, they'll start being emptied as soon as ballots are in there. So they're being emptied um, as soon as ballots are hitting the mailboxes, they will start being emptied every day all the way through election day. And at 8 p.m. on election day, then that, that's when they'll be closed because that's the deadline to return your vote by your mail in ballot. Thank you so much. And I'm going to apologize for my cat. He clearly is very engaged in the election process and electoral process once a year. Um, uh, I, I wanted to, to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about the, um, the tracking of the ballots, because I think it's really exciting that we actually have a tracking system whereby we know where that ballot is in the entire process from the time it's mailed out to the time it's received to the time that it's 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 registered and and um, and recorded um, and uh, and I, I don't know that everybody knows that but it's it's incredibly cool um, and exciting and and I'm not sure that that everywhere has that but uh, but I know that um that, that we benefit greatly from from being able to really know what what that process looks like so right in, when we saw the number of voters that were voting by mail for the first time in 2020, we we quickly um, put together a system where we notify we send if we have an email on file for you that's that's if we have an email on file, uh, we will send you uh, an email saying that we've got your request for a ballot. We will send you an email saying that your ballot's getting ready. Um, we'll send you an email when we've received your voted ballot. And we'll send an email when your ballot's been counted. Um, I'm super excited this year. We've actually enhanced that tracking even more. We're still in testing, but hopefully it'll be ready in the next week or so where we have integrated it with um, post office data. So you can get an email that your ballot is out for delivery. You can get an email that it's in your mailbox. And then the super exciting part also is your voted ballot back. So we can, you will be able to track your voted ballot back from if you use the mail to return it, if you drop a box, but if you drop it in the box, then that's picked up by election officials. But if you return it by mail, you'll be able to see when it's been received by the local board of elections. Um, so we are enhancing the notices. The USPS data 
um, that's an opt-in. So you have to sign up for that. The other notices are just standard. We'll send them to you no matter what. Um, but if you want the enhanced tracking, you'll have to sign it up. Again, we're in final testing stages. Uh, you'll be able to sign up through it through the voter lookup, which was the first link I dropped in the chat. Um, so when you look yourself up, if you go under the absentee status section, they will, when we're ready, there'll be a link for you to opt into that, that new, it, I would say, enhanced system. We're already going to do the four, but there are more options once we roll that out. That's amazing. Um, and I and I just had one more question, because again, these, these are questions that constituents have had. I, I know the answers, but I want to make sure that that um, that I'm I'm getting the answers from the experts uh, because there was some confusion about um, the fact that you could request a ballot electronically. Um, there were there was confusion about whether that meant that you could you could um, uh, vote electronically. Um, that is, am I correct? That is not a thing. You're still you're still voting, you know, on on a on a ballot, but you can actually do an electronic uh, request. All right, so let's break it into the request process and then the ballot process. So yes, you can request a ballot. You can request, go on our website and, and fill in your information and request a ballot. So you can do that by paper, you can do it on our website. So we do have a process that you can electronically request a ballot. Um, when you do that request, you part of one of the questions we ask you is how do you want us to give you your ballot? Do you wanna get your ballot by mail or do you wanna get your ballot um, via an email that we send to you that you click on a link and then you get your ballot. Uh, most voters choose by mail and that's great. Um, we know that some people, the only way they can get, they can't get mail or they prefer that way. It's a great service for our military and overseas voters who otherwise rely on uh, foreign postal services uh, to get their mail. Uh, but it's an option for anybody. So if you want to get your ballot electronically, you will we'll send you an email. There'll be a link in it and you can click on that link and access the system to get your ballot. But even if you get your ballot electronically, you still have to print it out and you still have to return it. So we provide what we call electronic ballot delivery, but there is no electronic return of voted ballots. So we can get you your ballot electronically, but you still will have to print it out and either mail it back, try it to your local board of elections or put it in a Dropbox. Thank you so much for, for, for clarifying all of that for us. And, and to your point about vote by mail, I, I think um, some, some folks have this, this, um, this perception that this is something new, but, but, um, but, but vote by mail has been the, the standard for the military for, for, a, for a good deal of time, is that correct? Yes, we've had voting by mail for decades and decades. Um, we are not like the West Coast where most people vote by mail, although our trend is certainly shifting. Um, but we've had what we would call absentee voting for decades. Uh, we call it now mail-in voting, but it's exactly the same. There is no difference in the process between what used to be absentee voting and what is now mail-in voting. It's just a it's a term difference, but no substance. But we've had it for decades. And what we did in 2020 is we just took our, our proven and, tr and tried and true processes that Delegate you explained going to watch. We just applied that to a bigger number of ballots. So yes, it was a much bigger operation, but all of the same rules that had been in place for decades are still in place. And the process is the same. It's just the volume is much bigger. Um, but we, all of the same secure processes that we've had for decades are still in place and, and will be for a long time. Well, thank you so much for, for, for being here and, and explaining all of this. Um, I, I, I know that I feel more informed and, and educated and, and a, a little more confident in, um, in disseminating information. I want to thank all of our uh, speakers tonight, uh, Congressman Sarbanes for talking to us about the, the you know, the federal level, um, Chairwoman Rodvian for, uh, for really talking us through the, this process at the, at the county level, and, um, and Ms. Charlson for, for really walking us through in great detail about, um, about the, the, the redistricting process um, and dissemination of information and how we can, how we can make sure that we have access 
to our vote because that that is our you know that is our power our power is in our vote so thank you everyone for being here tonight um, I'm going to turn it over to um, to Luke to uh, to take us out and remember we do have um, three more of these uh, town halls next week is um, it's not education I'm so, I'm so sorry I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let Luke uh, wrap up because I just I just blanked. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much to the delegate and to all of our guests, of course, Congressman Sarbanes, uh, Ms. Charlson from the State Board of Elections, and of course, Chair Rodvian. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. And of course, thank you to um, our candidate, John Wakefield, who's been sitting there and um, uh, asking questions and, and, and listening in attentively as well. Uh, so as the delegate had mentioned, we do have um, a few more of these events. Um, and by the way, you can find all of the events uh, that the delegate is taking part in or hosting on the uh, Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash delegate Heather Bagnall uh, slash events. Um, and uh, so next week's, uh, next week's town hall is going to be uh, expanding resources for uh, our veterans. So uh, we will be talking to some fabulous uh, guest speakers uh, for that one, um, including um, a, a gentleman from our uh, Veterans Caucus and also um, from uh, some of our veterans organizations here in the state. Uh, so please do join us. That's going to be Wednesday, 22nd of June, again at 6.30 p.m. And you can find out more information, like I said, on the Facebook, uh, which also includes the link to sign up if you would like to be here with us on the Zoom. Other than that, you will be able to find all of our recordings of our previous uh, town halls and our upcoming town halls on the Delegates YouTube channel. And um, you can find that with a link from her website, which is Heather back now. Uh, dot com. That would also be the place where you can uh, find out more about the delegate's work and, um, of course, join her on an activity, if you should so wish. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us. Uh, please do join us again and make sure that you are registered to vote. Uh, your vote is your voice and it is really important to always speak up. So thanks for being here once again. We will look forward to seeing you this time next week uh, uh, for a discussion about all of our um, resources that we have available in our, for our veteran community. Other than that, uh, please take care of yourselves and join us again sometime soon.